Welcome back to Advancing with Watercolor and still working with our series Developing a Motif. This week I'm going to be demonstrating how we control our edges with watercolor and I'm going to be um, staying with my motif of the bridge at the Boston Public Gardens and in this video I'm going to be dem demonstrating uh, particularly wet into wet technique. I'm using this um, image as my subject and here's a small study I did prior to uh, doing this video. You can see in the study there's an abundance of soft edges in the background and the foreground with uh, harder edges, broken edges in my subject of the figure crossing the bridge. So water, uh, in watercolor anyway, the way we, um, each different edge has a slightly different technique. Uh, you can see in the video of my sketch where I've placed my figures slightly high in the painting and <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to be beginning with a, a very pale wash and I'm using two colors basically in this painting. One is Payne's gray, the other is um, sepia, which is a warm hue. And I mix these two colors sometimes on the palette and sometimes I mix them on the paper. In any case, I'm starting with um, a very light mixture, mostly water. So I've diluted the color and my goal here is to paint the scene, the background above the bridge. So you notice that I've created a strong line where the top of my bridge will fall. And this is a strategy uh, when we work wet into wet. The aim of this strategy is to compartmentalize uh, different parts of the painting so that we can work a particular section, a smaller section, uh, before it dries. And in this case, adding color um, to this very pale area. I'm going to be adding a, a deeper hue, a, a darker hue to this area which is still very wet. The way we can tell it's wet um, is if we tilt the paper a little bit we see a shine on it or we can touch it with the palm of our hand to get a, a sense of how wet it is. In any case, this wet condition is ideal for uh, obtaining soft edges. I have my paper at a slight angle so gravity is going to be pulling the color down and um, at the same time giving me a soft edge at the top. You'll notice the brush strokes I just applied. It's a very soft where it meets the the buildings. As it comes down to the bottom of the passage, of course we have a very hard edge on the bottom but uh, in the area where we're working, as we touch it, the color dissolves a little bit, and as it dries, the color flows to the bottom, giving us a slight transition of pale, weak color on top to um, the deeper, uh, softer color below. And this is what I'm looking for. In essence, I'm creating uh, uh, trees and buildings, though it might be somewhat unrecognizable, and creating a, a kind of pocket or an illuminated area where I intend to place parts of the bridge and my figures as they walk across the bridge. We have a certain amount of time that we can make adjustments uh, to this area. The time is actually quite small because as soon as we start to paint um, our image it's starting to dry. There are th certain things we can do to keep the area alive as it were. One is um, a spray bottle is very helpful to send a very thin layer of small droplets of water into that area and by keeping it alive what I mean is uh, keeping it uh, receptive to any marks that we make so that we don't um, so we can keep soft edges and we don't create hard edges where we don't want them. 
Well, now I'm working below the, the line of the bridge, and it's, uh, the area is much bigger. I've switched to a larger brush that's going to um, take a lot of liquid to the paper, and this is done with the intent of keeping this area very wet and wet, all soft edges below the bridge. But I want to manipulate the hues. I want to uh, have a feeling of a darkness under the bridge, a feeling of reflections in the water, and um, some accents here and there of the um, curbing that follows the edge of the pond. But all with soft edges. I want it to be a passive area. This is a, a technique, the wet and wet technique. It's useful for many things. One of the things we use them for is reflections. Or if we want to use dark hues, as I will be doing in this section, uh, we add the dark hues into a wet area and, and we get soft edges. So even though we might have a very dark passage underneath, the eye will tend to move through it and will stop moving once uh, it finds some harder edges. So you can tell gravity is kind of pulling down my marks as I make them with the, with the brush. I'm using a mid-sized uh, mop brush for this because um, a mop is excellent at carrying a lot of liquid to the paper. Once I start to get the sort of uh, depth of color that I want, I'll probably switch to a smaller brush to make any final adjustments, any small marks that I want to do. Certainly when I work above and start to uh, add figures to a dry area, I'll be switching to a smaller brush for precision. You can start to see the beginning of the reflection. It's it's a difficult technique because of the timing aspect and it's a difficult technique too because we don't see the finished result completely until it dries. So if you've worked with watercolor for any length of time you know that typically um, the painting will dry about 20 percent lighter than when you put than it, when it's wet. So we have to kind of compensate for that and perhaps go a little darker or uh, dark, darker translates into thicker paint. So we use a little thicker paint into this wet area and we start to arrive at a darkness that's going to be our, our goal. So I'm showing you this in real time so you can get an idea of how much, how often I go back to adjust the color. In this case, it was quite often. Um, each painting's a little different. Sometimes I get the darkness that I want straight away. Other times I, I keep adding, um, getting thicker and thicker so that I can achieve the sort of depth of color that I want. Um, and I keep it at a real speed so that you can see also the how the color dissolves when we put it in and how often I return to an area and add more color. So different parts are starting to come out. I'm starting to get a few hard edges at the bottom which I will approach with just a, a wet brush later on to soften them out. But for the moment I'm intent on building up a depth of color underneath the bridge and uh, having that flow down into some reflections and you can start to see that come out uh, the, with more color being added. We have several edges at our disposal, several types of edges, and they're an important part of our watercolor vocabulary. And each edge is a different technique. Uh, okay, so the painting's dried now. Uh, after I finished with the color below and you can see there's a definite darkness to dark and soft quality to the area below and it does uh, things by itself as well. I'd like to take full credit for 
everything that's happening on the paper, but the water sometimes has a mysterious effect on the edges that we get. So especially the reflection of this post is broken and, and then dissolves again, which creates a sort of beauty that I like. And while I wasn't expecting it, I'm not going to adjust it because I, I like the way it's turned out. Up above, we're working with a smaller brush and working on dry paper, so we have a lot of control. We can place a mark and know it's not going to change. I do want to vary the, the tonality. In other words, create sort of a graded wash in, these, in this part of the bridge so that I get a feeling like um, there's a, a dense quality to the atmosphere and it's playing with these forms in different ways. So I'll manipulate the paint after placing it by picking some up as I'm doing now or dragging a paper towel across it or adding water to dissolve the form. And this way we can create the illusion that we have a atmosphere, a very tangible atmosphere in the painting and uh, very unusual lighting as well, kind of breaking through the, the fog or the mist and falling uh, on the, the parts of the bridge that we want to show. Anyway, as I was saying earlier, we have um, soft edges, which I'm demonstrating primarily today in the passages below and above the bridge. We have hard edges, which I'm painting now, and this is always done uh, in a technique we call wet on dry. So the brush is well loaded with pigment and the marks are placed on dry paper. We have a high degree of control. In fact, this is probably the way most of us uh, become acquainted with watercolor is painting on a dry paper uh, with a wet brush. And then somewhere along the line, some of our forms collide and we start to see wet in wet technique. And this wet in wet technique becomes sort of a hallmark of watercolor, I feel, of transparent watercolor where we can really let water do its thing and help us to achieve a higher level of image. And especially, especially when we juxtapose uh, these types of edges, we get um, a clear center of interest, uh, drama, contrast, this creates a great deal of excitement in the painting. And you can start to feel that come out as I'm adding uh, the uh, posts of the bridge and now adding some figures moving through the, the opening. And I think you can tell too how I'm varying, even though I'm painting on dry paper with um, definite forms, how I vary the wash to go a little darker on top, a little softer on the bridge. And certainly as it recedes towards the back, getting softer still. The figures are my center of interest, so I'm paint, painting them rather dark. And um, as though they're close to us. And the other architectural elements will be added uh, to them as and, and connected to the, the bridge as the painting progresses. Um, I have a, um, a good tutorial on creating different types of edges, which I will put in the description of this video, that um, if you look underneath the video, you'll see a description. In that description, I relay some information about this series and about what I'm trying to do with this particular painting. There's usually a link that will take you to a PDF that describes or shows you again uh, the steps that I took in this painting and the thoughts that I have behind them. There'll be a link to a couple of uh, videos that deal with different types of edges. In this case, I'm primarily dealing with soft edges. They make up more than three quarter of the painting. And in the, the other videos, I'll demonstrate how I use rough edges and how uh, we use hard edges and combinations of those lost and found edges. Each one represents, or each one is created by a diff different technique. So um, in the case of the wet on wet technique, some things that make it different are the aspect of timing. We have a very short time to create this effect. 
And so learning to compartmentalize uh, parts of your painting and, and make that part of your watercolor plan become very important. Having the pigment ready to go uh, so that you're not spending time mixing colors overly much. And then working with a large brush to make sure that uh, you can manage this area before it starts to tighten up and dry. This is typically where uh, we run into problems is the painting will start to dry, start to lose its sheen, and we add a mark and suddenly we've created a cauliflower. The reason that happens, the cauliflower is an accidental where uh, you add either paint or water to an area that's half dry. It's lost its sheen, but the, if you touch the surface of the paper, it's still cool and still feels a bit damp. If you do this, you can create usable effects, but most often uh, you get accidental. So timing is a big part of the wet in wet technique. You can see the finished image now. I've added some highlights. I've added other architectural elements and the atmosphere is, is very tangible. We can feel the softness in the air. We're we rely on a few hard edges and a few left whites to uh, carry the feeling of overhead light and a misty scene. I've got some other examples of the bridge done with uh, different techniques. I'm going to show you the dry technique. This is the dry technique and you can it's hard to see because it's all uh, working together, but the all these passages were created uh, using a very dry brush on dry paper. And the paper that I like for that technique is a rough surface, which gives me a greater amount of texture along the edges. This painting was done using uh, wet on dry, where our brush is fully loaded. We haven't taken any of the pigment out and we're painting on dry paper. Again, this is the way that most of us learn watercolor, is by painting on a dry surface with a brush full of color. And it's very controllable. Um, I like to use that for passages that are going to be my center of interest or have a bearing on the painting, a strong bearing on the painting. I like rough edges where I want the painting to dissolve a little bit, or I want there to be a feeling of light playing on a surface. For example, sparkle on water is a great application for using dry brush. And I like wet and wet, of course, for creating misty, rainy days. So have a look at the description underneath, and there you'll find um, more information about how we create edges with watercolor.